Okay, so we're back once again. Here's where we're going to go on top of the group problem and actually do one additional thing. Now, this is pretty much the only time I'm going to have you do this in class. And it's mainly to show you because we just saw a mess, pardon me, a mess of math in solving that group problem. In fact, here's a brief reminder. We started with this. We did a whole bunch of math here, a whole bunch of, well, set up here, then more math, even more math. And then finally, we got our answers. Now, it's easy to get caught up in the math and basically say, OK, I am robotically solving math. And then I got an answer that Sanchez wanted. And he said, good job, and patted me on the head. But I want you all to move beyond that. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to see that what you did on the page is actually reality. So here is a map. In fact, this is a cut frame from Google Maps. It can be kind of hard to see, I'd imagine, even with the high def. We've got the cell phone tower. It should be right around in here. I think it's actually a little bit off from there, but I tried to put the arrow as best as I could where the things are physically at. Now, we might be a little bit off. That's okay. We're just going to double check that the things that we found are actually pretty good. Now, it's hard for me to do this with the smart board because I will actually, if I touch it, then it will think that I want it to interact. But I could start up here. I'm not certain that was my best move, but we'll call that a straight line. If you're actually doing this on the paper, get a ruler of some kind, draw a straight line. We have M. Now, according to our predictions, what we did on the page, we said that M should be 4.10 miles at 214.1 degrees, 214 degrees. All right, then we also predicted vector n, as best I can on this. Again, it's difficult for me to do this because if I put the meter stick on the smart board, then it thinks that I'm writing there. That won't happen on real paper, so you'll be able to do that. Then we found vector n, which is n, should be equal to something like 5.79 at I said negative 21.3, I believe, degrees. I don't think I still have my note card here. We'll double check that in just a moment. All right. And then we added them tail to tip, and we should find the following vector. Not my best line ever. The lead. I'm going to do something else in this video and show you another way that we can do this and help verify this a lot better. Although, you should be able to do this by hand because, unlike the smart board, you can actually touch your paper and it won't freak out. So, O, we found, should come up to something like 4.83 times, not times, at negative 65.6 degrees. That's our displacement vector here. Now, ideally, what I want you to do is this. On the page that you have, there's a scale bar right down here and it says one mile. That's the scale for this map, and it should be pretty much the size of one of these little squares, one of these large city blocks, because they're a mile each between the major roads. Covell to Danforth to Edmond, and then you have things like, uh, let's see, we've got Coltrane and Sooner Road and Air Depot, etc. Coffee Creek Road up there. I tried to set it up depending on your printer settings that when you print it off, you should find that one mile comes up to right at about two centimeters. So you can go in and you can actually measure these out. In fact, I'm going to try and do that right here, right now. So we've got a comparison. On my smart board, it comes up to about 52. Hard for me to measure because I'm bad at this. Um, I'm also not all that tall. So it's about 51 or 52 centimeters. And one mile is 12 and a half centimeters. So one mile, one mile on my smart board equals 12.5 centimeters. I measured this one to be a length of about 51 centimeters. So 51 centimeters, this is exactly what I want you to do. If I take this and I do 51 centimeters, and every 12.5 centimeters is one mile. If I do 51 divided by 12.5, I end up with 4.08.
Me trying to measure this, I measure it to be, should be about 4.08 miles. I expect it to be 4.10 miles. I'm very close to the value there. Let's check one of the other ones. All right, I'm gonna measure from here down to here. Ooh, that's about 72, 72 centimeters. Let's try that again. All right, 72 centimeters divided by 12.5 because every 12.5 centimeters is one mile. 72 centimeters on my big projected screen means that this becomes 5.76 miles. We predict 5.79. We are very, very close. Why are we off? Well, partly it's because Sanchez is having a terrible time actually getting this aligned. On top of that, I told you that the arrows are pretty close to where they belong, but they may not be perfect. Let's try the last one. I'm gonna go from here down to here. We've got about, if I'm reading this correctly, 62, 62 centimeters. Let's try that out, 62 centimeters. 62 divided by 12.5, and we get, uh, this one's a little bit more off, but that's okay. Remember, I don't have things exactly where they're supposed to be. I apologize on that. But we do get 4.96 miles. It's a little bit greater than the 4.83. Now, that's a combination of me having a hard time reading it on the board, and then also my arrows may be slightly off. That's one thing that I wanna bring up. This is why in real life, you don't usually draw this stuff out because it's hard to get it exactly where it needs to go. What you would end up doing is you would do exactly what we did with the long workout problem. Now here's the last thing that I want to check. I wanna check some of the angles involved and this is one that you're probably not gonna be able to see very well and I don't have the best equipment for. Oh. Ah. I think I'd be better prepared. All right, some of my stuff got kind of messed up here. Now, we said that this would be at 214 degrees. That is measured from the positive x-axis. So that is this. If this is 180 degrees, you can look back at what we found. This should be 34, 34.1 degrees, but we'll call it 34 degrees. If I then take this protractor and I put it up here and I measure down along Trying to get this set up. Uh, part of the problem is I can't see that well uh, here. There we go, that's a little better. Bring it down here. Kind of hard to see, not my best drawing. Uh, when you do this on paper, you should get something pretty close to about 35 degrees. Um, I'm not gonna try on that one way up there because it's really hard for me to see. This one I said should be negative 21, that's 21.3 degrees. Give this one a try. This one I can see a little bit better, and I get that it cuts right through 25 degrees, but you gotta keep in mind that my pen drawing on here is like five degrees itself, so it's hard for me to tell exactly where it's at. This one we mentioned should be negative 65 degrees, so that's 65.6 degrees below the x-axis. Now this one's gonna be a mess because this isn't a straight line. You can see that it's all squiggly, squiggly town. Um, if I measure that, yeah, it's a bit off. All right, now I'm gonna show you a different way of doing this. This is a way that I usually work with inside PowerPoint itself, but I'm going to have to go over to my computer to do it. I'm gonna lead you through a few things that we've got on here. I'll remind you that we expect this one to be about 4.10, this one to be about 5.79, and this one to be about 4.83 at various angles. I'm gonna get some information. Here we go. I'm going to draw my vectors. And here's where I can take advantage of some of the things in PowerPoint. PowerPoint draws nice straight lines that I have trouble doing on my smart board. Now you can also, with this, some of you may have tried to use PowerPoint before and found that it's kind of hard to get it to go exactly where you want. You can actually hold down the Alt button, the Alt key over by the spacebar, and it allows you to actually move it much more precisely than usual. You can see that I've got something pretty well drawn out here from each of the arrows, from this arrow up here down to this arrow down here. I'm gonna make this a little bit easier to see, format shape, let's make this a thicker arrow, and let's give it the same color that I was giving the other ones, which is red. 
There we go. There is our vector m. Here is where I can get some additional information, size and position. We have a height of 1.87 inches and a width of 2.71 inches. That by itself isn't terribly useful, but here's where I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set up a scale bar. I'm going to start over here where the actual scale is. I'm going to hold down Alt so I can drag it exactly as far as I want. Tie it in a little bit less here. Scoot it over some. Let's see how well that covers. Not quite. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, with this, I can find out how long a, while, a mile is. One mile is quote unquote 0 0.75 inches. All right, so that's in this computer world that three quarters of an inch is one mile. All right, let's work with that real quick. So, we said, oops, here's the old problem. We said that this one looks like this. We've got something that goes down like this, and that 0 0.75 inches equals one mile. Now we have to use non-millimeters and centimeters, but that's okay. We're going to find that this has a y value and an x value that looks like this. Very poorly drawn, that's supposed to be level, that's supposed to be all the way down, but that's okay. Here's where we're going to get some of our information. If I right click on this, size and position, height 1.87 inches, 1.87 inches, width, width 2.71 inches, 2.71. Two point seven one inches. Let's find what our hypotenuse would be. It's still a triangle, and the height and the width are at right angles to each other. So one point eight seven squared plus two point seven one squared, and I take the square root of that. The actual length of that arrow that I drew in PowerPoint is three point two nine inches. And if one, I'm sorry, if one mile is zero point seven five inches, I'm going to divide this by point seven five. And that should give me an answer in miles. This gives me about 4.39 miles. And that's a little off, partly because I've drawn it a little bit off there and there's some thickness there. We could also go through, and here's where we could solve for one of the angles. We've got a triangle here that we could actually check. We could find this angle, theta. I'm going to do opposite, which is 2.71 divided by uh, adjacent, 1.87. Inverse tangent, that's 55 degrees. That's 55 degrees. I would do uh, 270 minus that, and we end up with 214. So 270 would take me all the way here, and if I backtrack by 55.4, I end up with this, and my calculator tells me that that's an angle of 214 Point six degrees. There's our 214 degrees. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop it there because part of this is I think even in PowerPoint I'm having trouble drawing it exactly to the scale that we need. I will remind you that the arrows may not be in the exact places that the street map directions I've got are telling us. So there's still some unknown along with this. You could go in though and you could draw the other ones and do exactly what we've done here. You're going to find that they come up to be about the same. Once again, just a moment ago, uh, you saw that we could actually draw them out and we could measure them and they were pretty close to what we were looking for. The big thing that I needed, when I did it with the meter stick, we actually showed that the distances were pretty spot on. The thing that I had trouble verifying was the angle and with this, we pretty much bullseyed the angle. In fact, let's try one other one real quick. Let's see our end result. O, the O vector. I'm going to scroll over a little bit, scroll down some. Ooh, I may have to zoom out ever so slightly so that I can get everything that I want in there. Here we go. I'm going to draw one from our very beginning, as close as I can to our very end. This one's our O vector. Format shape. I'm going to bump that up a little bit thicker so that we can see it, and I'm going to match the color that we had. It'll be green. This one is O. Here we go, let's find 
our quote unquote components. The height is 3.61 and the width is 1.59. 361, 159. Uh, 3.61 and 1.59. Now, that one didn't tell me positives or negatives. I have to kind of go along with that. But remember, our result, our resultant, is pointed down and to the right. Our O vector, we could solve it like this, and we will find, let's see, 1.59 squared plus 3.61 squared. I take the square root of that and we end up with uh, 3.94. That's noticeably off. I'm a little worried about that. Let's double check the angle. The angle was the main thing that we were actually looking for. And so even if my thing isn't quite the right size, if I were extending it, then the angle should be fine. Big thing that we're here for is the angle. So let's find this angle. If I do the arc tangent of opposite, 1.59 divided by 3.61, I end up with 23.7, or I'm sorry, 23.8, 23.8 degrees. Give me just a moment. That leaves this angle. be 66.2 degrees by my calculations. 66 degrees beneath the x-axis. If you'll remember, our results that we actually found were about 66 degrees beneath the positive x-axis. I apologize that the magnitude, the actual scales here, are a bit off. Take a look at the actual physical drawing that you've got for the quote-unquote lab. My goal on this is to show you that as we've seen with me drawing it out, we could get a pretty good match for our lengths. Uh, I've got something a little bit off in the scale that PowerPoint gives me, but on the upside, we've got that with this, we were actually able to double check the angles pretty well, which was hard for me to do on the smart board. On paper, you should be able to do both of them. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from this, so for the lab, I want you to basically put that you measured that this was however many centimeters, 8.3 or something like that.